dive right in and talk about cleaning up your DOM using the Angular host element. First things first, what is the host element? So um, if we look at other frameworks, uh, specifically let's talk about JSX, the way you define your components looks something like this. You define a function, you return a J uh, HTML-like syntax, and what you see is what you get. That's exactly what is rendered to your DOM. In Angular, if we take that exact same template and we put it in a component, uh, we get something a little bit different. We get an extra element that's wrapped around our template with the selector that we defined. And that's what we call the elusive host element. So in other frameworks, you see things like this. We don't do that in the Angular world. In the Angular world, we do this. So it's, it's kind of a half joke, half truth, because in the end what we actually want is something like this. So my name is Rafael Mestre. I'm a senior engineer at Hero Devs, wonderful team making strides in the open source world. And I am from Puerto Rico, which is uh, this little island in the Caribbean Sea. So a little backstory. Uh, why I, I wrote this talk. Um, something like this is what you would commonly see when, uh, when you're defining a template and you need to conditionally change something, whether it's some text, a different element, toggle a class, anything. Um, and you would write it like this. You scope your condition to where you want the changes to be made. When I first started, um, I was in a project that made heavy use of, of this beautiful pattern where you copy an entire chunk of a template, even though you only want to change the text really nested deeply, but you copy an entire block, just replace what you want, and that resulted in a lot of code duplication, um, a lot of template repetition. And that, that has stuck with me to this day. Uh, it has led to me being very... DOM conscious, which is something that usually um, isn't paid enough attention, right? We, we write business logic and we think about our tests, but we don't take care of, of how we write our templates. So uh, other than things like conditional rendering, it also led me to be very conscious of examples like this where we add wrappers upon wrappers to achieve a certain layout or a certain behavior, and I would uh, learn about things like uh, stacking contexts um, or different uh, ways to write a layout and to find ways to optimize them in, in such that the template is easier to follow, easier to read. Now, it's not something that I would take to an extreme like those um, CSS arts where you, in a single div you have the Mona Lisa. But um, to a certain extent, if you can uh, optimize uh, your DOM, it's, it's great for many reasons. First off, it impacts performance negatively. So if you have lots of nodes in your DOM, um, there's plenty of uh, prior art about why this is bad and why this affects your app. Also, because it affects style inheritance and performance uh, percentage-based calculations. So if you've ever had to write something like this, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, fun little fact, there's a page from the CSS working group about mistakes they think they've made over the years, and uh, this is one of the things that they, they would change, that the behavior, the intrinsic behavior of, of heights in, in DOM elements. It also complicates parent-child layouts. Um, as you may know, uh, display types like flex and grid don't only affect the elements that you define them on, but they affect their children. So if you create a flex element, all its direct children become uh, flex children. And so that poses a problem when we introduce dumb elements where they shouldn't. In this case, this intruder class, this intruder div is going to break the flex relationship between the top div and then the inner children. And because of these reasons and a myriad of others, 
It harms developer experience. If you've ever asked yourself, how do I know which element is overflowing? Why is this Z index 999 not overlapping the other one? Um, all of these things uh, affect developer experience. So simplifying your DOM is going to make achieving these goals easier. So let's talk about the host element. First up are attribute bindings. A pretty common scenario is to wrap the whole contents of a component in a div just because I need to add a class or I need to toggle a class on it, add some styles, and we need it to apply to the whole component. In this example, that's the sole purpose of this div. We don't really need it for anything else. So what's the alternative? The alternative is the host property of the component. Excuse me. Uh, in this case, we've moved the same binding to the host property, and now the logic works the same way. You have a class that's bound to a property applied dynamically, and you don't need that wrapper div anymore. You can use this for anything that you would write in the template on an element, so bindings like class.className, .class name or style.with.unit, attributes for testing, accessibility, or CSS properties. I like using this pattern a lot, binding to custom properties to keep logic out of JavaScript. If you need to toggle styles, this is a great way to do that. You can also use the property to apply static classes, so Fans of Tailwind will rejoice. Or other accessibility attributes that you don't need to necessarily make dynamic, like ARIA labels, tab indexes. And a pretty important one that's often overlooked are roles. You can make uh, an element be treated like a semantic element just by using roles in, in the host of your component. You might be familiar with the host binding decorator, which is uh, used more or less in the same context, to uh, often paired with getters um, or just static strings. Um, but as we've seen from this morning, the general theme is that Angular is moving away from using property and method decorators in classes. So uh, I suggest sticking to the host property. Maybe eventually we can uh, get the preference changed in the style guide and um, get that ESLint rule flipped. And of course, with those uh, shiny new Signal APIs, we can make some more dynamic bindings, uh, places where we uh, would have wished we could have bound to an observable. Now we can achieve the same thing with Signals. Now let's talk about style sheets because you can bind to classes and bind to styles, but you don't necessarily need to make things dynamic all the time. So using the host selector, anything we put in there applies to the host element, and these are static styles that we can define here. The most common use case for this is display block, and this is such an important distinction that there's a CLI option and an Angular JSON option to generate components with this property by default. So it, um, if you don't know the difference between display inline, which is the default for custom elements, and block, um, I, I suggest uh, you learn it because this could be the difference between introducing another div or another element that you don't need as a wrapper. Combining with the host selector is also useful for encapsulation. If you have the native view encapsulation disabled or in any other context you need to escape out of the encapsulation, Combining with the host selector uh, treats that as if it were still contained in the style sheet of that component. So since we still find ourselves needing to use ngdeep all the time, then uh, this is nice to keep things scoped and uh, it doesn't, so it doesn't leak globally. And we also have the host context selector, uh, which takes in another selector and only applies those styles if the element has an ancestor with that selector. As for event bindings, 
Uh, we have a similar situation as when we talked about classes and styles. We also find ourselves binding to events. If we need, for example, we have a card component and we need a click anywhere on the card component to trigger an event, and this is what we normally do, right? We wrap it in another useless div just so we can trigger that element. And so, same thing applies. Um, any syntax that you can use on the template, oh, almost any, uh, you can use here. So this will bind the event to the host, and you don't need another div. And this supports uh, any syntax, like I said, that you can use in the template. So this includes event manager plugins um, and global modifiers like window and document. And just for completeness, um, this is also something that you were able to do with the host listener, uh, but decorators are clunky, so don't use them. When it comes to directives, we ran into a similar situation where we want to apply the behavior of a directive to an entire template. So normally we would wrap it in a div. Up until recently, that was the only way to do it. Maybe another alternative would be to rely on the consumer to apply those directives, but that's not, that's not a good practice. So starting with v15, we have the directive composition API. So if you want to apply the logic of a directive to a component such that you don't need to configure it, you can define those in the host directives property of the component. There's an alternative syntax for it so that you can bind their inputs and outputs as if they were your components. So in this case, if you pass a CDK drag data to your component, it's subsequently passed into the CDK drag itself. And with this other syntax, you can alias the input so that your component has a different definition than what uh, the directive is doing internally. And you can inject them this way using DI as well. So this is something that you would previously need to use something like a, a view child to achieve. Uh, you can use DI to access it directly as well. Well, what if I don't need a component? If you don't need a component, maybe you need a directive. But fortunately, since the directive, uh, sorry, the component inherits some properties from the directive decorator, these property, this property is also available on directives as well. So dynamic class binding, static classes, attributes, events, and the decorators are all available when you're using directives as well. So you can use this to compose some patterns and abstract things like event handling in a way kind of like this. But please don't prevent pasting in your app. <laughs> you can also use directives uh, and a composition of their selector to abstract away business logic. This is a contrived example. Maybe I wouldn't do exactly this. But in a directive, you can abstract away the injection of a dependency and then have that directive handle that logic and keep your component cleaner. And I also like to use this pattern to target directives or components that I don't own. In this case, we can add some default values to the AG Grid Angular component by targeting the same element selector. As you can see in the selector, there is no attribute targeting, so these would apply to the element without any additional attributes, so long as you import the custom directive as well. What if I do need a component? Well, that's what we just talked about, right? But in some cases, what we want to do is we want to preserve the behavior of a native DOM element. And we can do that by uh, using the native element as the selector and adding our own uh, attribute selector as well. This pattern is used heavily in the material and CDK component libraries where you use input, mat input, for example, instead of just using a mat input. And this is why there's lots of important native behaviors in the browser that we don't want to take away. So with this, we can sort of create an Angular managed component that has a native element definition. And of course, we can apply all, everything we've just learned about um, host bindings to these types of components as well.
you can also target existing attributes. So in some cases, you don't want to define your own custom attribute because you just want to augment the behavior of something native. Like here, we, we're trying to make sure that all external links are tagged with certain attributes. So we can do that sort of automatically, and we don't need to add any extra properties, which may be desirable in some cases. When it comes to structural directives and control flow, uh, the host element doesn't come into play, but we can also make some DOM optimizations here. We've seen some cases where we use, in this case, a div element to wrap something in a conditional when we don't really need to wrap it that way. We could just use an ng container that disappears during rendering or the new control flow syntax. In case of other structural directives, we can continue to use the uh, ng containers to prevent creating additional nodes. Or you can inline in cases where it makes sense. As a last resort, it's also good to know about the display contents property. Display contents will make the DOM ignore the box model of an element. So what this does basically is it's still going to render the component. You're still going to see it in your DOM. But for almost all purposes, it's effectively ignored. So this is useful in cases where you do want to group certain things, but you don't want the interruption of that intruder component. In this case, the flex children are still treated at, as flex children of the top one. You need to be careful with this property, though, because anything that you apply to the host is going to be ignored as well. So if you have classes or styles on there, those are going to be effectively ignored by the DOM as well. And finally, I have a little wish list that I've, I've talked about all of these things before, but today I've got the ear of the Angular team, so wink, wink. <laughs> um, the ability to actually make the host element disappear would be nice, I, although I know that um, th th that functionality is finally uh, tightly coupled with, uh, with how components work. So, uh, but yeah, it would be nice to have a type of component where uh, the, the host element would disappear during rendering. Or the ability to redefine as a native element um, so that uh, we can more easily target these, uh, these Angular managed components where we don't want to define a button and a mat button, something like that. These are all in my mind, by the way. These don't exist. So don't try it. The other thing I'd like to see is that um, right now we have a lot of things happening in the component decorator. I know that um, there's plans to make some of these go away, but I think it would make sense to put these in the template where you make the bindings for every other element that you're dealing with. So um, there's, a, there's a story, a, a ticket open for this since 2017. So if you can push it up the queue, I'd appreciate it. So yeah, we, we covered a lot of material. Um, we talked about a lot of things that start with the word host. Um, I hope this, uh, you can put this to good use and clean up that DOM and pay more attention to how that affects performance, developer experience, and how you can make things better for your team. Thanks so much.